In this video, I'm going to teach you how to deal with networking in Docker. I'll explain the most important types of networks that Docker has to offer. And then we'll dive into some coding to see some of them in action. At the end of this video, I'll also give you a small project to test your Docker networking skills. Also your Googling skills. Welcome to the eighth lesson of Docker from Zero to Infinity series. My name is Raghav. Let's get started. There are many things you can already do with a standalone container that's running your application. Your container already has access to the internet. So your app could do anything like make API calls, stream data, whatever it needs. But you need to understand Docker networking when you want different containers to talk to each other. For example, you might be running a microservice inside a container which needs to make requests to a MySQL database, a Redis cache and a Kafka stream. All of them deployed in their own containers. How do you ensure a secure line of communication among all these containers? How do you do service discovery? How does your container talk to the outside world if needed? The answer to all your problems lies in Docker networking. To use Docker's networking, you have to create a network. While creating it, you specify which network driver to use. Docker comes packed with six network drivers to provide core functionality. But the network system is pluggable, so you could write your own network driver to use. The default network driver in Docker is Bridge. This allows containers on the same host to talk to each other. If container A and B are on the same bridge network, they can talk to each other. But if they are on different bridge networks, they cannot talk to each other. When you create a new network, unless you specify a different driver, it will be a bridge network. Docker already creates one bridge network for you when you install it. And when you run a new container on your system, by default, it connects to this bridge network. The host network driver can be used to remove network isolation between the container and its host machine. Unlike in Bridge, a host network container doesn't get its own IP address. When it binds to a port, it is directly the host port. Host mode is useful for better performance because there's no additional network layer in between. But it only works on Linux. Can you tell me why host network can't work on Mac and Windows? Let me know your answer in the comments below. The third driver is Overlay. Overlay networks allow Docker containers on different host machines to talk to each other. They connect the Docker daemons running on these host machines to each other. This allows you to scale out horizontally. You don't have to deploy all your containers on the same server. Finally, there's the none driver. This means your container does not have any network and it is completely isolated from the host as well as other containers. This is more secure than the other drivers since all network communication is disabled. Apart from these four drivers, Docker also has IPVLAN and Mac VLAN drivers, which I'm going to leave out of this video for the sake of simplicity. You can always go to the documentation to learn more about them. All links are in the description below. And now I want to show you how to work with bridge networks. Time for some action. Okay, I'm using a fresh Docker installation. The first thing I want to do is list all the networks. As you can see, I already have some pre-created networks. Now let's run a simple Alpine container. By default, my container will connect to the pre-created bridge network. It is very easy for me to confirm this using inspect. The container metadata shows what networks it's attached to. Here's the IP address. Also, the network's metadata shows the containers that are attached to it. Container A. Cool. Now I want to create my own bridge network. Huh. So there. That's my new bridge network. 
notice that I didn't specify any driver. So by default, my new network uses the bridge driver. Now let's run another container, but this one will use my SRE11 bridge network. I use the net option to specify which network to join. If I inspect it, I can see that it's connected to the SRE101 network and here's the IP address. Now, notice that these two containers cannot talk to each other. They are on different networks. No response to ping. Now let me run another container on SRE101 network. Call it container C. Inside this container, I'm going to run a simple TCP server that will listen for connections. Now in container B, which is also inside the SRE11 network, I will try to make a request. Bingo. Containers B and C are on the same bridge network, so they can talk to each other. But A is on a different bridge network, so it can't talk to B and C. Finally, if you'd like to expose your container server, which is inside a bridge network, to the host, you must publish its port. Let's call it container D. Now this container will run a TCP server inside it at port 80, but this port 80 is mapped to my host machine's port 8000. So now in this terminal, I'm on my host machine and I will make a curl request to the container. And there you go. This way my bridge container can also be exposed to the host machine. Now I'm just going to delete my network. And it's done, my network is deleted. So this is how bridge networking works in Docker. Now I have a little project for you. Deploy two Docker containers on two different host machines. One of them will be a server, the other one a client. Now use Docker networking to connect them such that they can both talk to each other. Verify the connection by making a request from the client container to the server container and receiving a response back. What's your strategy? Tell me in the comments below. And if you end up doing the project, share the link too. I would love to take a look. If you have made it till this point, congratulations. This is the final episode of my Docker from Zero to Infinity series. And now you are ready for bigger challenges. Nothing teaches you software better than getting your hands dirty. So start working on projects. Try to grab more Docker work in your job. But most importantly, stay curious. From here on, I'm going to keep uploading some bonus episodes to this series, teaching you some advanced concepts about Docker.
but I am super proud of you because now you're ready to face complex real world challenges using one of the most important tools of the trade. Also, I'm soon going to launch my next series to make you an expert in Kubernetes. So keep an eye out on my channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Keep leveling up your DevOps skills with me. Hit a like and share this video with your friends. Your support will help me continue to make high quality content to teach DevOps to you and to our entire community. Goodbye and see you in the next video.